What is happening, everybody? This is Cody, a.k.a. DFS Prodigy, coming to you live, talking about this upcoming 12-game NBA slate for tomorrow. We're breaking this down outside. It's a nice day outside, so I decided just to break this tournament down out here on my laptop with the dogs out, sitting in the pool. So, like I said, my feet propped up. Like I said, I'm breaking down this NBA slate. It's a 12-gamer. So, before we begin, hit like button for me. Definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like a ton of y'all know we're breaking this slate down. So, let's start off with the first game in Philly at Indiana. Make it a drink really fast. All righty. So first game up, Philly at Indiana. So the playoff race is getting tight. We're going to see some players getting out and not playing. So let's start off with the Philly side. So on the Philly side, James Harden, we know that he's been an up and down so far. We know that Doc Rivers is not happy with him. So I'm going to Joel Embiid at 12,000. I like Joel Embiid compared to James Harden. Tobias Harris might see additional play time at 6 I do like that. But the rest of the team, I'm not really a huge fan of. I'm kind of staying away from. On the Indiana side, Malcolm Brunton is questionable along with Goga. So Tyrese Halbert, 9,000 is going to be the main guy I want to get to. Buddy Hield 6'6", is not a bad option either. Bursette, 6'1", he might see more minutes with no Goga. So along with Jalen Smith, but we know how it goes with the bigs on this team. They kind of fought your weight. On the Cleveland-Orlando game, on the Cleveland side, no Elvin Mobley and possibly no Jared Allen, so we're going to see more of Kevin Love and Laurie Markin at 5'7 and 5'5. Five, five. Moses Brown will see additional minutes of 4'8. He's the value player that I do like. And then Darius Garland, 9'6, is going to have to do a lot on this team. I don't mind him in this matchup, but it could be a blowout, though. On the Orlando side, no one to card junior. Cole Anthony, Am France, Water, and Bo Fushmall or Jalen Suggs. So Mo Bumba, 6'3, I do like him. Oh, key key for it. I much have to go to Markel Fultz at 4'6 and RJ Hippen at 3'6. Those are two guys will see the additional minutes. Houston and Brooklyn on the Houston side, KBJ. He's got to do it all eight there. I love him. I love Jalen Green, which he'll be featured in my fitness six pack, six pack article. If you want to check that out for Yahoo. And then Alfred Singen, he's going to see more minutes at six. I'm going to do like that. Sean Tate will see additional minutes of five, two. I don't mind him in this easy matchup for the Houston team. Ben Simmons is still out. Seth Curry's questionable. No growing drug. So we could see more Patty Mills at three nine as a value, but KD and Kyrie, both options. Obviously, they're both viable. Andrew Drummond, 6'8". I do like him seeing the minutes that he's producing. Charlotte and Miami. On the Charlotte side, Lamar Ball, 9-2. I don't like a lot of this team, especially in the matchup. I'm kind of fading away from this team. Um, Miles Bridges, 7-7. Seven, seven, not a huge fan. Terry Rozier, not a huge fan. That's 7-1. And especially with Gordon Hayward possibly being back. If he's going to see a good lot of minutes before, I do like him. On the Miami side, Kyle Lowry, P.J. Tucker, Vincent, Deadman, and Martin all questionable, so we need to keep out for those because they're all out. We're going to see more Max Schultz at 4 but I still like him at 4-3, seeing a good minutes. Jim Baller at 8-4, I do like him here in this matchup. Bam Adebayo, 7-9, should feast in the paint. Tar Hero is just a secondary option for me for now. Atlanta at Toronto. On the Atlanta side, Bog is questionable, no John Collins. So, Trey Young, 10-8, good spot for him. I, I like his upside on this late. And then Clint Capella, 6-5, it's just the minutes for me. We need to see him see a good lot of minutes. I'm just not getting to a lot of this team as a whole. Toronto side, though, Pascal Siakam, 9-4, I'm much to go to Van Fleet at E1. Harrison Barnes, I never really want to play him. At 7-2, that is a good price tag, though. If there's no OG in it, nobody I do like Gary Trent at the 5-7 price tag. Going to Milwaukee at Chicago. On the Milwaukee side, Giannis is questionable, but he should be, in fact, playing. If he's out for some reason, we're going to see more Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton. Uh, Bobby Porter, 6 8. I'm much rather go to Brooke Lopez at 4 3 to see him more minutes. And I like his production way more than Bobby Portis. If Giannis is in, it's only Giannis for me as a whole on this team. On the Chicago side, no lines of ball, obviously. DeRozan, nine, 8 9. I like the price tag. Much rather go to Vucevic at 7 7 and 7 8 for Zach Levine. Caruso seems good minutes, and so is IU. Those are two valuable value options if you want to get to them seeing good minutes. And then last set's game is Washington at Minnesota. On the Washington side, no Kyle Kuzma. So Porzingis at 89, I like his upside. KCP is way too score independent for me. Denny Avidia and Rui are good. They're going to see good minutes. I like both of them as a value. And the Thomas Sonoransky at 4 6 is going to start. I do like his upside. Now on the Minnesota side, I'm just not getting a lot of this team. I know the matchup is great, but the only guy that stands out to me is D'Lo at 6'4". This is based off the price tag. Towns, I'm much rather go to other higher price options. I'm much rather go to other guys than Anthony Edwards, who is hard to trust. What an awful game, but Portland and OKC. So as you can tell, a lot of these guys are out. Give me Brandon Williams at 6'6". The price tag is iffy, but I do like him. I like Eubanks at 7'5". Keon Johnson at 5,000. He, he's an awful name to play, but again, he's going to see minutes along with C.J. Ellaby. On the OKC side, no SGA, no Giddy. 
So Theo Maldon, 7-3. Do you really want to pay 7-3 for Theo Maldon? It's tough to pray, but Roby's going to see good minutes at 6 a.m. Yeah, it's just this matchup is awful in a bad way, but it is still good for fantasy production. Spurs at Denver. So Kelton Johnson, 6-7. I do like him. I like me some of Trey Jones at 4,000 is going to start, and Josh Primo at 3-5 is going to see more minutes. Uh, Josh Richardson at 4-5. I don't mind going to him at all either. But Denver, that's Jokic for me, and Jokic only at 12-9. That's just how I feel about Denver all the time. Memphis at Utah. On the Memphis side, doesn't mean Jared Jackson, Tyus Jones, and Steve Mountain are all questionable. If they're out, I'm going to get to more Melton at 5-7 and more Dylan Brooks six seven. 6-7. Tillman would be a valuable option at 4-2 to start in place of Adams. If they're all in, I'm just not getting to this team. On the Utah side, this is pretty cut and straightforward. Give me Donovan Mitchell 8-6 to smash this spot. Give me Mike Cullen at 6-2 and a good price tag, and that's it for this team. Pelicans at Kings on the Pelican side. Again, this uh, team I'm not getting a lot to. Just uh, they're all healthy. I want guys that are going to play more minutes, and they're all going to see a strict allotment of minutes. It's just CJ McCollum eight seven. It's okay to me. Joe Val eight five. He could be good. Um, it's just again, I just don't want a lot of this team. On the Kings, kind of a similar story. If Simona and Fox are both out, we're going to get to Davion Mitchell at seven nine, which is a hefty price tag to pay. I'm much rather go to Harrison Barnes at six two. Last game, Lakers at Phoenix. The Lakers. I'm not playing this team. I don't even want to talk about this team. They're a devastation. They're disappointing. I'm not talking about this team. I'm fading this team as a whole. Do it. Just fade this team. On the Suns, they're already in the they're already in the playoffs, so we're going to be iffy with their minutes. So down Booker a 9-3. We could see, again, their minutes cut, though. So we could see more of campaign at 4-5. We could see more of Cam Johnson at 4-9 and more possibly Jamal McGee at 4-2. So that wraps up the slate for us. Thank you for tuning in. It was a great and safe rest of our night. Have a good one, everybody.